Oh, so what you first want to do uh, is mix uh, half of a stick of butter with a fourth cup of framboise and you need a cork bottle opener which is why it took me a while to get this not much of a wine drinker beer is actually the way to go for me so yeah it's a nice little cork and from Bois smells delicious and you can always mix it in with a darker beer and make a half and half it's pretty good just top off one of your beers with some from Bois it's very sweet and tart um, it's delicious all right so you just want to do that much we're just trying to melt the butter here you don't want to heat up all the beer While that's melting, we'll mix in all our dry ingredients. So the recipe calls for two cups of, two cups of flour. Um, so we're going to do one cup of whole wheat flour. one cup of all-purpose flour although you can just do all-purpose flour if you like uh, I like mixing them up okay that's a bit too much all right and we're gonna use yeast um, if you've read any recipes but you can kill yeast what yeast you can kill it yeah it's actually live uh, you keep it in the fridge or the freezer I keep mine in the freezer but uh, usually you don't want to expose it to anything higher than 80 so we're gonna monitor our temperature here just like making beer um, all right so the recipe calls for two and a fourth teaspoons of yeast. Hmm. That's an interesting number. Alright, but we'll mix it in with our dry ingredients. I just prefer mixing it that way. It mixes more evenly in my opinion. One, two, and a fourth. Hmm. There we go. Got our yeast in there. Oh, yeah, that's the size of an envelope, and most recipes usually call for an envelope. Eh. You can learn a lot by reading. God forbid anyone starts reading now. They might learn too much. Just kidding. Okay, um, it also asks you to set aside half a cup of flour. So I'm actually going to set aside a half cup of all-purpose flour. But then she uses a third cup of rye flour because she just wants to throw it in for flavor. I actually want to try cooking with barley flour, but I don't have that. So one half plus one third is one third six is five sixths. So it's nearly one extra cup that you're setting aside. And as you can see, my cup's all dirty because I just dislike washing. Um, all right, I think my butter is melted. And you can whisk that in. Whisk, 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 whisk. And we need to add one more third cup of beer. Oh, it smells delicious. Uh, you gotta make sure all your butter melts. Um, there's no more, mix it until there's no more solid left in there. So, you just wanna make sure that your beer isn't too warm. And we're gonna add one third cup of 
from Wa to the melted mixture. Hmm. It's a little fizzy. You might want to pour it like a beer should be poured, but I'm being kind of, I don't know, lazy maybe. All right. I kind of let the beer cool for a bit longer than probably I should have, so we're going to check the temperature. If I could only find my thermometer, it's about 70. Yeah. More or less 70. I need it up just a tad bit more because let it cool too long. I would say 80 is like ideal. Butter, beer, flour, sugar. It calls for two tablespoons of sugar, but I'm gonna use honey. Why so little sugar? That's a good question. Anyway, you don't want this to be that long. Because um, usually the sugar is just used to feed the yeast. Yeast feeds on sugar. Well, it didn't quite change, but since it's not anywhere over the limit where it would be killed, I'm completely fine with it. So I'm going to mix it with my wet mixture because it's honey and yeah usually this goes with the dry ingredients but like I said you know I think because it's so viscous it's not going to mix well so you want to mix it in with a hot or warm mixture so it can mix more or less evenly Okay, we need two large eggs. Oh, one teaspoon of salt. Teaspoon. Of my half teaspoon measurement. I've got everything all mixed up here, so sorry for the uh, disorganization. Okay, so we have our flour, our yeast, and our salt in this mix. Okay. And we're, we have our honey, beer, and butter in this mix. So it asks for you to put it in a machine and knead it, but I do not have a machine. So I'm going to mix it by hand. No, not by hand, but with my mix, mixer thingy. There it is. Mix that in well. And it smells delicious already. Anyway, I've been mixing the mixture up and adding some of the flour left in this cup because that's what the recipe tells us to do. And I just remembered why I don't use wheat flour. Because um, if you're kneading bread, it actually gets a lot harder quicker so it's a lot less manageable um, to work with so in turn you have to add more liquid to keep it kind of a doughy like, soft mixture so I'm just gonna pour in some from bois for the mixture may have been too much but since I still have a lot of flour it doesn't matter and uh, originally I was using my, I think this is a pasty, pastry blender, but um, it's not very good when you're making bread. This is good for pie crusts. And, uh, you know, back when they didn't have machines, everyone was kneading by hand, so might as well do it the old way because I don't have a machine to help me with this task. Oh, that looks a lot better. Yeah, so uh, 
If you're gonna use wheat, you're gonna have to use a lot more liquid. So don't use wheat unless you really want to. Or you can make a mix just like I did and make a big mess. But it should come out good. Yep. Just keep kneading it. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever made that before. Oh, geez, spill everything while you're there. But when you need it, you really have to get into it. And you gotta punch it and whatnot. So, just wanted to show you what I've been doing. And look, I have about, I guess, a third cup of flour left over. Um, okay, well, I'm trying to save my recipe now. I remembered I forgot to add the eggs. So I had just added two eggs. Remember I had about a third cup of flour left? We're gonna mix that in too. Anyway, you wanna add the eggs to the mixture right, uh, you can probably add them right into the wet ingredients where your beer and butter are at or you can add them first to your dry ingredients and then add all your wet ingredients. Alright, here's my dough update. See, it looks nice and pretty now. Um, I can actually work with it. It kind of feels like a pizza dough, which is probably what should have been in the first place um, but every now and again I'm just sprinkling flour to kind of fix it. If you want you can mess it up do what I did at the eggs after it's up to you. Okay. Looks nice, it looks like a ball but we still have to let it rest so the yeast can do its thing. Punch it Knead it, roll it into a nice little ball, and see. You see it? Look, it doesn't break apart right away. It pulls, which is good because we're gonna have to roll it out. All right, there's your ball in the bowl and it's just going to be covered and soon after I'm going to roll it and add the rest of the ingredients alright well you want your dough ball to get larger preferably double and when you press it it should come back to its original shape alright so now we have to roll it not very fun because I'm not very good at rolling. Okay, let's flatten this out a bit before I begin to roll it. You want to sprinkle flour on your rolling mat or surface, whatever, to keep it from sticking. It's kind of like making a pizza in a way, but not necessarily. Because we need to make a rectangle now. We need a 9 by 5 because that's where we're going to put it in when you're nearly done. lifting and letting gravity do the work does better stretching than you and the rolling pin. So feel free to do that too. She says to roll it to a 20 by 12 rectangle more or less. Once you get the shape you desire you can start slicing in and putting filling on it.
I'm actually stretching it by hand because I'm terrible at rolling. So we're gonna cut cut our dough. You want a good serrated knife for this? I like this knife. It's my best tomato cutter. Um, I'm gonna use just butter and a little bit of sugar for the filling. So it's just gonna be a layer of butter pretty much with sugar on top of here. All right, well, I'm cutting about two inch pieces. I'm not really following the directions anymore. I'm just kind of doing my own thing. But I think you all may have figured that I was doing my own thing since the beginning when I used Frambois instead of Val and Brie instead of Cheddar. You want about two inch slices. It should be easy to pick up. So I got a barbecue brush and I'm gonna use confectioner sugar. All right, so I've mixed in a mixture of about two teaspoon, oh, I'm sorry, two tablespoons of butter and about, um, I think it was about two tablespoons of sugar, confectioner sugar though. So I was saying this is actually how you make frosting and I mixed that in really well. All right, um, the original recipe calls for shredding cheese. Although the brie that I bought is baby, baby brie, so that it's not a very good consistency for, you know, for shredding, um, grating, I'm sorry, grating. So we're just gonna mix, or we're gonna spread our sugar mixture on top of these layers. And we're gonna scoop some brie on it in a little bit. Um, you also have to make sure that um, you cut your bread correctly. Um, mine isn't cut correctly. There's a few little corners that are still stuck to each other. So you know, just spread all that in. All right, and like I said, we're scooping brie into our mixture because of the consistency. So I guess you can scoop it and press it. It should melt in eventually. So the longer strips will have about four scoops, the shorter strips will have about three scoops to two scoops. Just making that work. I've actually never made this before. This is the first time I make it, but I think it'll work uh, because I like brie, I like frambois, and this is a recipe that has previously been made with a few different ingredients, but I think these are good ingredients too. I kind of give up just using my hand now, but I gotta do this quick. Anyway, tear it up. I like the brie crust, I guess you can call it. Um, I think it tastes very earthy. Um, um, I don't know, I just really like brie. However, um, the reason why I really wanted to make a sweet bread is because it's more festive for the holidays and if you're into making and baking things in the during the holidays, this would probably be ideal. I think it's a good recipe. Um, it's got flavor. I don't know, sweet. I, th I think sweet is good for holiday holiday cheer, if you would like to call it. Okay, so here's a little twist on the recipe. I decided to use cranberries in between too, but these aren't just cranberries. These are orange flavored cranberries, which are, in my opinion, just a tad bit cooler. They just have this flavor. But anyway, if you've ever eaten these cranberries with uh, brie, it's a perfect combination. And then you're just going to layer these. And I guess we could just fold it, keep folding it, fold it, fold it, and then we're going to cut it and put it into our uh, pan. So there's still a lot of work to do.
Uh, not that much, but. All right. Let's put this on top. Put this on top. And put this on top. All right. So we want to fit this into this. So we're just going to cut. Okay. Let's see. The thickness is five inches. I cut about four. And uh, cut all the way through. And yeah, put it like that. And if you cut a thin slice, you know, no big deal. You can always cut it a thinner slice. You fill it in. <laughs> oh my goodness! What are you doing? You're right. Anyway, see what I just did there? That's you just improvise, you know, no big deal. The end product's gonna be delicious, so there's really nothing to worry about. Pull apart, it's definitely gonna pull apart. Just um, stuffing it in there. See? I still got this tiny piece, I gotta work it in there somehow. So I'm sticking it up front. Hmm. Doesn't really fit. I'll make it fit. Okay, I folded it in half and I'm pressing it in. I'm pressing all the bread in. All right. And I'm pinching the areas uh, where, you know, there's kind of big gaps. Um, okay, and we'll soon be ready to bake it. Okay, and the last and final step before putting it into the oven, I'm going to drizzle some honey on top of it. Make sure you pick up the honey and not the dish soap. A little while ago, I almost picked up the honey instead of the dish soap, and I was going to wash my dishes with honey. I know, that's not important, just thought I'd throw it in. Anyway, drizzle as much honey as you want, it's, it just helps it. And just put it in the oven. Alright, this is the finished product. It, it actually looks very good, and it tastes very good. I just had some. There you go. Take another look. You can see some cranberries and some brie. Some brie did ooze out while baking, so I put a foil sheet underneath the bread. Alright, hope you enjoyed this instructable.